All right, let's start page two of the unit seven study guide. In question six and question seven, you're asked to look at the functions that are given up above. So function A, B, and C. So question number six, you need to convert function A and create function B. So let's see what changed. In function A, we have some kind of a cosine curve here. Amplitude is going to be 1, and our period is 2 pi. So this is the standard just cosine of x, okay? So let's see what function b looks like. Well, function b, I can already see the amplitude has changed. So this is going to have an amplitude of 3. Uh, let's see the period. So if I start at the uh, y-axis and I do 1 full cycle... Okay, period is still 2 pi, so that part hasn't changed. But now this is where it's going to get a little bit weird because this cosine curve over here, remember, it starts off center high. So it's starting at positive 1. So if I put that on this graph, right, and I kind of fill it in, so that would be here, here, at pi, I'd be at negative 1, pi over 2, okay, 3 pi over 2, and then at 2 pi, I'd be back here. So this curve, this is the original cosine curve. And what I noticed is that my cosine curve here, right, the original one for function A, starts at positive 1, which is off-center high. Um, our graph is not starting off-center high. It's starting at the midline. So we're going to have to create some kind of a phase shift here. Now, to me, the easiest phase shift is just to find the first part where I'm off-center high again. So this is going to be right here at pi over 2. So let's see what has changed. All right, describe the transformations. So we have an amplitude change. Amplitude change. Oops, there's an E at the end of change. Uh, amplitude change to 3. Okay, there's no reflection here. Um, or I'm not going to consider a reflection. And for me, I'm going to call this a phase shift right pi over 2. Okay. Phase shift right pi over 2. Here's the deal, though. You can do a bunch of different phase shifts. So you could call your phase shift any of your high or low points because cosine starts high or low. If you start high, you just need to pay attention to where your phase shift is. So if it's right 5 pi over 2, right pi over 2, no problem. If you start low, so uh, 3 pi over 2 or 7 pi over 2, starting low means you'd also need to include a reflection. So if you want to do that, you are absolutely allowed to. You just need to include all the different changes. All right, now part C here, function C here, there's no graph. You're just comparing this original, or I'm sorry, this new um equation to the original equation, which was just cosine of x. So I want to identify all the different pieces. And the first piece I'm going to pay attention to is the fact that there is this negative sitting here. So that's going to be a reflection. All right, so reflect over the x-axis. All right, so that's one. We have an x plus 3 pi over 2. So it's going to be a phase shift. If you're never, if you are ever uncertain what phase shift it looks like, take the whole expression. So x plus 3 pi over 2, set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So negative 3 pi over 2. So this tells me this is going to be a phase shift. It's negative 3 pi over 2. It's going to be left 3 pi over 2. And last but not least, the minus 4 at the end here is going to be on a slide up just a little bit. This is going to be a vertical shift. And that was, what was that, minus 4? So vertical shift down 4. All right. So that's where you can look at the graphs and compare them. You can also look at a graph and compare it to a new equation. But again, just identifying those transformations. Now, the last problem on this page is problem number 8, which is the first time I'm actually asking you to officially graph. So I need you to identify amplitude, period, phase shift, and vertical shift. If one of those things does not exist, the directions say to write none, okay? So if you have an equation that doesn't have a phase shift, then you just write none, okay? 
Uh, graph one complete cycle, label the axes with any critical values. So first thing I'm gonna do is just take a look at my equation and I'm gonna identify the important bits. So first important bit, my amplitude is gonna be five. All right, and that comes from this value right here. Uh, second important bit is the period. Now that's gonna come from this part. All right, specifically the two that's in front. So standard period for cosine is two pi, but I'm gonna divide by this number in front of x. So two pi, that's gonna give me a period of pi. Now to figure out my phase shift, take the whole expression, set it equal to zero. So it's gonna get me two x is equal to pi, so x is equal to pi over two. So phase shift is gonna be right pi over two. And last but not least, vertical shift. There is no vertical shift. However, there is a piece that I do wanna pay attention to, which is this negative sitting out front here. So that's going to reflect, there's an E, let's try that again, reflect over the x-axis. Okay, so I wanna take this and turn it into an equation. Uh, no, it is an equation. I wanna turn it into a graph. That's what I wanna do. So I am going to take the reflection, the amplitude, and the period, and that's where I'm gonna do my little x marks to spots. Once I've done that, I will transform those little x marks to spots using my phase shift, and in this case, there is no vertical shift, but I would do that if needed, okay? So in order to deal with the amplitude and the period, I'm going to label the x and y axis. So period is pi. All right, so starting here at zero, one, two, three, four, that's gonna be pi. Half, so pi over two, half again, pi over four, triple it, three pi over four, okay? I know my y-axis needs to accommodate my maximum here. So one, two, three, four. Hey, look, my maximum's gonna be at the very top. One, two, three, four. There's gonna be my negative five down here. Okay. So cosine curve with an amplitude of five. However, it's reflects over the x-axis. So my first little X marks the spot is I'm going to start low. So I'm gonna start on the Y axis low. Okay, so little X here, I need to come up. This is the lowest, so I need to come up through the midline, go all the way up to the maximum. As I come back down, I'm gonna go through the midline and then back down. So remember where you start and where you end are identical. So now I'm gonna move all of these little X marks the spots well, let's see, I need to do a phase shift. Do, 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 do. I need to do a phase shift right pi over two. So each one of these little X marks the spots is gonna slide over pi over two units. Now pi over two is two spaces. So I'm gonna make a little mark here, or make a little note here, two spaces. So this little X is gonna move over two spaces. Little dot here. This little x moves over two spaces, okay, over two spaces. Do, 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 do. Now, you can absolutely move these last two, or you can also recognize that this would come back towards the y-axis, and it's up to you which way you want to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and move the other two over. So this little x moves here, and then this little x moves here. Now, because this is such a tall curve, be careful how you draw it. It is still a curve. And I know a few of you submitted some homework assignments. And one of the things you're gonna notice is I'm gonna start making, or I have been making comments. That is horrible, let me try that again. Um, I've been making comments where it says, watch your curve. If your curves aren't actually looking curves or, or, they um, are concave out when they should be concave in or something like that. I'll make a little note of that. Please be careful. It does need to be a curve. Now, the last thing I want to do is to finish this is for this particular graph, I've identified or I've shifted it over. So I need to kind of continue this. Uh, so let's see. Pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4. So this would be 5 pi over 4 and then 6 pi over 4, which would be 3 
3 pi over 2. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so there is your new lovely little curve. And remember, you could have continued this curve back to the left as long as you recognize you are as you're working to the left. Um, your maximum, midline, minimum, you'd come back up to the midline and then up to your maximum. Okay, so that's page two and I'll continue with a different video for page three.